There are some terrible misconceptions in society that Parkinson's disease is incurable and that the symptoms associated with it are caused by death of the dopamine producing cells in a gland of the brain called the substantia nigra, even though medical research proved this wrong long ago. 200 years ago, in fact, Dr. James Parkinson himself published autopsy findings that revealed spinal curvature, abnormalities at the C1 and C2 vertebra traumatizing the brainstem, and muscular rigidity throughout the body, particularly around the area of the neck and shoulders, caused every Parkinson's symptom. And I have personally proven this to be correct by achieving very quick success over Parkinson's symptoms by dealing with these three problems along with the stress and anxiety that originally provoked them. Unfortunately, medical doctors and neurologists are trained to disbelieve Dr. Parkinson's autopsy findings and use tests such as an MRI and a DAT scan to look for low dopamine levels and lesions on the brain and spinal cord as the primary cause. Listen to what patients themselves have to say about these two tests. What is the name of the neurologist who carried out your diagnosis? Uh, Pedro Guajardo. It's, uh, he's in Monterrey, Mexico. Now, did he do an MRI on you? Yes, he did. Did he find lesions? No, he didn't see anything abnormal. Uh, nothing in, abnormal nothing, on your MRI? Nothing abnormal. So then how did he arrive at the um, conclusion that you have Parkinson's disease? He uh, asked me to do a couple of things, like to walk, and he saw my face. He uh, he concluded that because of the symptoms, he was from the symptoms, was, right? Yes. And you realised that every symptom that you have can be caused by excess muscle tension and misaligned skeletal. Yes. Can you just say your name? Richard Pospera. Where do you come from? Uh, currently living in Huntsville, Alabama. What have you been diagnosed with? Uh, Parkinson's. And what is the name of the neurologist who carried out that diagnosis? Uh, Dr. Wise. And did he do an MRI? The previous doctor before him had done an MRI. And and did they find lesions? No. No lesions at all? No lesions at all. Could you tell me your full name? Shivika Jofra. Where do you live? Uh, Toronto, Canada. How long have you been in the wheelchair? Two years. What is the name of the neurologist who carried out your diagnosis? Dr. Lee. Did he do an MRI to see if you had lesions? He no, took yeah. uh, one MRI when I was diagnosed. At that time in 2008, no lesion no. in the brain. Your first MRI and you had no lesions? No, no. How bad were you at that stage? Like, she was walking, like... Holding balls. Holding balls, or uh, with a cane. So, right. Then uh, they did another MRI in May. Then they found lesion in the brain. Many lesions? No. Is that, oh, there is a lesion. There is a lesion. There is. And he took another MRI, still lesions increasing. Were you in a wheelchair at that stage? Yes. Yeah. You... He took another MRI in January this year, 2010, but it was stable. There was but no lesions? No lesion at all. Not one any... lesion? No, no, no. Okay, so now, are you able to stand up on your legs and hold your body weight standing? No. You can't. If... My name is Alba Galeano. I am 66 years old. And you live in Brooklyn? Yes. And you were diagnosed with Parkinson's disease? April 16, 2009. A general practitioner, the, his name is Albert Rosso. Okay. And your neurologist? It's Dr. Valderrama. And uh, where is he from? Manhattan. Manhattan, okay. Yes. Did either of them do an MRI that showed lesions? Yeah. Where is, the, where, do, where is that MRI? Here. It's over there. There is a... It's, it states here, no, no bony destructive lesion uh, is appreciated. No evidence of intracranial mass effect in this patient with tremors. This is a radiology report, East Manhattan Diagnostic Imaging. Yes. 
Suresh, what age are you? What age? Sorry? 59. Did they give you a brain scan when they gave you your diagnosis? Did they ever find lesions in the test? Start with you. No lesions. With the paperwork? Sorry? In, in the brain or on the spinal cord? No lesions. <laughs> Here are some videos now of Parkinson's and MS patients who testify their neurologist didn't even request an MRI to look for lesions, that they made a diagnosis by observing their stiffness and other symptoms that are assumed to be associated with these two, in my opinion, imaginary diseases. Um, Suzanne Jane Louie, I'm 63. Yep. I've been diagnosed with Parkinson's since 2010. I live in Newcastle, Australia. Yep. What was the name of the neurologist who carried out the diagnosis? Initially, I went to Dr. Catacar's rooms. Was there an MRI done? No. So they didn't look for lesions? No. So they just observed your symptoms and came to the conclusion you had Parkinson's? That's right. All right. And what was the name of the neurologist who carried out that diagnosis? Do you, do you remember the name? Dr. Elkis. Elkis. Dr. Elkis. Dr. Elkis? Yeah. How do you spell that? Elk, elk. And, uh, did, did he do an MRI? No. No, he did so not he, do an MRI. He watched me walk. He watched me. So he just made the diagnosis on observation of symptoms. Right. Yeah. And you and I both know that those same symptoms that you have can be experienced by the average person who comes in off the street with really tight muscular system due to ongoing stress. Correct? Yeah. A person can even have numbness and tingling down the side of the face because of really tight neck muscles mm -hmm. and a misaligned C1 or C2, correct? That's why you can find TMG involved in one side of the Diagnosed with Parkinson's when? Approximately last April, 2011. April, okay. Right. So I was then having a physical, and I asked the doctor about it, and he recommended a neuro neurologist. Yep. yep. And so right. I didn't care much for his test. And he walked down the hall, and. Yep. And then he says, That's what you have, let's start you on medication. So, there was no MRI done? No. Okay. In some cases, doctors and neurologists will use a DAT scan to test if a person has Parkinson's disease or multiple sclerosis, which is a test to find out how much dopamine a person has in their brain. But this test is just as hopeless as lesions on an MRI for finding out if a person has either of these two disorders. This means they can do a DAT scan on anybody who's been unhappy for some time and get a negative reading, even though they have no physical symptoms that they can relate to a disease. What sort of confusion is this going to cause? Dopamine is a hormone made by the substantia nigra in the brain and it is released when we are positive and loving about our life 
to encourage good breathing, blood flow, digestion and kidney function. When all these interactions are working efficiently, the result is that our muscles will remain relaxed and really flexible. On the other hand, when we are not positive and loving about our life, our substantia nigra will stop releasing dopamine, which will in turn cause poor breathing, poor blood flow and digestion, and sleep problems due to incontinence. All these negative interactions will then cause our muscles to be very tight, which will cause the symptoms the doctors and neurologists are trained to associate with Parkinson's disease and multiple sclerosis. The fact is, there is no test to prove that these two disorders even exist as diseases. And now here are some questions and answers from the New York Parkinson's Disease Foundation website explaining the DAT scan. The answers are supplied by Dr. James Beck in relation to Parkinson's disease. Question number one, what is the DAT scan? Dr. Beck's answer, the DAT scan is an imaging technology that uses small amounts of a radioactive drug to help determine how much dopamine is available in a person's brain. Question number two, can the DAT scan diagnose Parkinson's disease? Dr. Beck's answer, DAT scans cannot diagnose Parkinson's disease. These scans are used to help a doctor confirm a diagnosis. Well, if there's no main test to show that a person has Parkinson's disease, how can the DAT scan possibly do a confirmation? Question number three, what is the role of the DAT scan for people living with Parkinson's? Dr. Beck's answer. Currently, there is no objective test for Parkinson's disease. In my opinion, they can't possibly come up with a test for Parkinson's disease because I don't believe it even exists. The symptoms that medical doctors and neurologists are trained to use to tell people that they have an incurable disease that they call Parkinson's disease are caused by extreme muscle stiffness that's provoked by life stress, just as Dr. James Parkinson described way back in the 1800s. But medical doctors to this day are still ignoring him because this reasoning will give popularity to natural therapy ideals and stress management counselling programs like mine. And my goodness, we can't have that, can we? Did he do an MRI on you? Yes, he did. Did he find lesions? No, he didn't see anything abnormal. Uh, nothing know, abnormal nothing, on your MRI? Nothing abnormal. So then how did he arrive at the um, conclusion that you have Parkinson's disease? He uh, asked me to do a couple of things, like to walk, and he saw my face. He, uh, he concluded that because of the symptoms he was... From the symptoms, was, right. Yes. I changed the neurologist after that, and they, they missed some, some more tests. You know, then I went to a, a medical center in, in Reading, Pennsylvania, with Dr. Kanchana. She uh, ordered, well, I suggested her. I heard about this kind of, kind of new uh, test that they were carrying in the United States. I think it had been used in, in Europe for 10 years, that DAT scan. A DAT scan? Yeah, okay. I think that's for uh, to measure the uh, production of dopamine in the brain. She concluded that uh, the results were con concording with, uh, with the uh, Parkinson's diagnosis. In, in uh, accordance with? In accordance with having the Parkinson's disease diagnosis. Right. Now I'd like to show you what really causes the symptoms associated with these two so-called diseases. In every single Parkinson's and MS patient I've treated, I've found excess of tension in the spinal supportive muscles from the neck down to the hips, numerous blocked nerve junctions in the nerves of the torso and limbs, and abnormalities in the spinal column. And when I correct these problems, 
along with the anxiety and stress that caused them, the symptoms start to go away. Now I'd like to show you some before and after spinal photos on day one and day five of treatment that show how reduction in symptoms is proportional to musculoskeletal improvement. Uh, this is Rigu. Rigu has uh, five misalignments with a massive a column of tension on the left side pulling his spine over and he can't walk. On day five the misalignments are all gone. 80% of his tension on the left side is gone and he, and he can walk. This is Tiffany. Tiffany has six misalignments in her spine and excess muscle tension on the right side of her lower spine and the left side of her neck. On day five she only has two minor misalignments but all the excess tension is gone. Day one she couldn't walk and day five she could walk. The same with Barry. Multiple misalignments in his spine with a major kink at the cervical. All the misalignments are gone on day five most of the excess muscle tension is gone on day five. He wasn't able to walk on day one. He can walk on day five. Uh, this is Ross. He has six misalignments on day one and a massive column of excess tension all the way down from his trapezius to his lumbar area. He couldn't walk and on day five he has no misalignments and 90% of the tension is gone and he can walk.